you are too sensitive. Sakida, yours is nothing compared to others. Don't expect me to say a good job or I'm proud of you. You are only embracing me and your father. Your problem is solve yourself. Imagine if you face this every day from your loved ones, how would you feel? These are responses and first-hand experiences from the youth on the ground through questionnaires and focus group discussions. We go through challenges in many shapes and forms. Does hearing these words help us or even benefit us at all? We are UB Well. Hi, I'm Hidayah and this is my co-founder Zakia. I'm here. Let's talk. UBWA was established in May 2021, which focuses on overall well-being. So moving forward with this YAC project, we aim to address the mental health aspect of the well-being. Based on the 105 responses collected, 90% of the youth have the desire to be heard and supported by adult figures around them. Unfortunately, 71% of them have shared their experiences of being dismissed while sharing their challenges. So this is where conversations about youth well-being become conservative and reduced due to such fears. This leads to the empathy and support gap where adult figures are unaware of the effects of their words and actions. 50% of these adult figures are actually parents and this problem is also related to the United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goal of Good Health and Well-Being. We aim to build a society of empathetic and supportive adult figures who are empowered and ready to listen when someone shares their stories through the three-step framework. So step one, the empathy and support toolkit training, also known as WARM. Step two, programs with mental health advocates for adult figures to practice the WARM framework. And step three, the human library, a community space where adult figures will exchange their experiences through video productions and find out how empathy and support can be shown to their loved ones. Following the WARM framework, we have actually run the pilot workshop and have started out with 10 adult figures. We have reached 95% of overall satisfaction for that pilot workshop. So the WARM framework is actually an acronym for Welcome, Be Aware, Respect and I Am Here. It is developed as a toolkit to easily remember the steps to approach someone when they are struggling while it acts as a reminder to provide warmth of empathy and support. Taking the next step forward, this framework will be a resource that is accessible to adult figures, and this is where the UBWA app comes in. This app serves as a one-stop platform for the community to access wellness resources, especially related to the WARM framework. Users will need to register to partake in workshops, trainings, alongside accessing resources for their well-being. Users can opt to join the community space where they feel encouraged by the words of others or even speak to others, other adult figures who had been trained in the WARM framework to exchange thoughts, ideas, as well as experiences. This will then allow the app to create a personalized experience for the users. And here, you can see the draft for the web version of the app that we have started to work on with our tech advisors to explore our options. So to get the app developed, we are looking at a year's timeline. The projected completion for the app as well as the launch will be in the first quarter of 2023. We have scheduled to start working with developers in the coming week to research ideas to achieve what we have in mind. As the app is, as the app is being developed, we will continue to carry out the following in each quarter throughout the year. And as we progress, we'll bring about the awareness for the empathy and support gap and deliver the importance for adult figures alike. Now, to begin with, we are looking at 30 to 50 new signups for the WARM Toolkit training. And eventually, when the app launches, we are targeting to have at least 60 new downloads each quarter at least, and retaining 50% of participants. The increase of downloaders and active users will indicate the needs of the community and that the problem and gap at hand is being addressed and tackled progressively. 
So the business model we have is divided into three sources. The community users, which is open to public downloads. URL users, which is open to the URL community that we have. And partner users, which will be downloads from workshops conducted for partnering organisations. So the app is free to download. However, per user, particularly for the empathy and support toolkit, the induction will be $10, certification $30, as well as traineeship will be $30. Now, as for the budget, to update as of today, uh, we have reached out to our app developer who only got back to us yesterday and has quoted $3,200 for app development and maintenance for a year. We are in the midst of arranging for video production and we are looking at $2,000 instead. So with the reduced cost, our expenditure will significantly decrease to below $15,000. We plan to apply for the PSG as well as Google Ad grants and secure corporate partners to further reduce the cost of some of the expenses. So leading this forward, this will be the team dynamic that we have. So in summary, number one, we will collaborate with partners to create greater outreach for the WARM framework. Number two, we will look at how we are able to further contribute to the UN Sustainable Developmental Goal, which is on good health and well-being. And number three, the launch of the UBL app will be in the first quarter of 2023, which is a one-stop community platform to unleash the empathy and support potential within the adult figures. It all starts with a simple phrase, I'm here, let's stop. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So on to the judges for the Q&A. I really like the warm framework. Would you mind like sharing or elaborate a bit more on the warm framework and how does it actually link to uh, adult figures um, supporting our young people? Yeah. Okay, um, so I'll, I'll take that question. So the warm framework, we actually consulted uh, our, one of our advisors who is also a clinical psychologist. So basically like also previously I had worked as a counsellor in the mental health field. So uh, back then, I noticed that uh, the individuals who came to seek out help had a couple of difficulties with getting their caregivers to, um, uh, to hear them out or to even be there for them. So with the WARM framework, it's basically a short way for them to, number one, uh, W stands for welcome. Of course, we, as, as a parent, we don't tell our kid, oh, welcome to, to the room, but we could just make, make them feel that, um, warmth or make them feel comfortable enough to share. Or when, whenever you're ready, you could let me know. Uh, and the, being, uh, the part on A, to be aware, is basically to take note of how the person is feeling or how the person is behaving. Example, oh, I noticed you have been coming home lately or I noticed you have been down uh, as of late. Is, is something bothering you? And the R stands for um, to uh, respond. Uh, sorry, to respect. So basically, as the youth is sharing uh, their issues or their concerns, we do not have to uh, judge uh, immediately. Example, um, if the youth were to say, like, um, I, I did not do so well for this exam, and then before we, uh, as an adult figure, before we interrupt, uh, or say, like, oh, but your other friends have tennis, have art class, why, why you cannot do it? So before we jump in or before we start to judge, uh, we just let them talk. And basically, the M is basically, uh, I am here, like, anytime you need to talk or through a text or through a call or anything, any form of platform that is comfortable for the... Uh, youth to reach to the uh, adult or to the parent. Uh, basically, it's just a way to remember that I am here no matter what. Yeah, if I can add about the I am here, I think it's only an expectation for adults to be there, to be present for their children, but it actually helps to get somebody to just say, hey, I'm here. And even if there's not much for me to share with regards to my well-being, at least I know that there's somebody that I can you know, go back to for support. And even if moving forward, I would need some form of um, additional professional help, then at least I know that this particular adult figure is actually supporting me in this journey of growth as well as healing. Just wondering, um, because the whole idea of, I, I must say that uh, it was heartbreaking to hear that 71% felt that the adults they reached out to dismissed, you know, um, their, when they were trying to reach out for help. Um, in this model, I'm just wondering whether there will also be involvement of the familiar adults within the life of the youth, because um, I thought that there was an opportunity there to kind of edify and educate the people around um, the youth of that need to be supportive? Because typically, we, we look to our parents, we look to our families for that support. Um, does this model allow for that 
outreach, you know, so that um, you're educating communities and parents um, about this need. Yep, uh, actually this model also allows, so in our pilot run, there was a tennis coach who, part, um, who enrolled and participated in the pilot workshop. So basically he had issues to coach the, uh, uh, this like school team. So he was having difficulties to understand their needs or even how to approach uh, the team to motivate them for the upcoming, uh, up, their upcoming uh, inter-poly tennis competition or something. So after the workshop, basically he realized like, uh, it's not really about solving the problem, but it's really about just letting the players share their concerns or how they're feeling prior to the matches or trainings and to just, no matter what, like, whatever result, like, he is here and he's just not going to leave the team. So uh, he found that part helpful, especially in approaching, uh, because he's a male, so especially in approaching females. Yeah, and, um, additionally, we highlighted a bit on the video production. So the whole idea is to also reach out to other adult figures and actually have conversations with, for example, one adult figure who has gone through the framework and the other adult figure who has never gone through the framework before. So they are able to actually have that sense of relatability, exchange their challenges and difficulties to relate to their use. And um, also with that conversation, when we bring it online, we bring it to the spaces where adult figures are mostly connected and where they actually consume content, we hope that that can be, you know, conversation starters um, and also be a means that, hey, you know, there's this such thing as the warm framework, there's this training, there's this workshop, there's this app, and maybe I can take one step uh, further to actually help my loved ones. Yeah. Uh, th thank you for sharing that. I might be thinking a bit too much here, but I was just wondering, uh, in terms of the human library of adult figures, when they are sharing perhaps their own challenges, because if there is an identity also known and then if they share too much, then uh, to what extent does the app or the program support the identities of the people who are also being talked about? Okay, um, so definitely through the app, um, it's actually a personalized experience, right? So as they go through the workshops or all of the resources within the app, um, there is not much... Um, points of where they have to disclose, you know, who they are struggling with. Um, but of course, it will be, okay, is it a family member or is it, you know, a, a, a sibling or a child or a student? Uh, but moving forward with regards to, you know, the community space, sharing their stories, um, definitely um, they are not forced to actually share, you know, um, an identity of a child, for example, or, or oh, you know, it's my first si uh, first sibling in the family, I'm, ha I'm having difficulty to relate to the person. So um, that will be on that part, but also with regards to like the videos, the human library, um, the things that we also put up online, uh, we will definitely extract pointers from the sharing of experiences. So we will try to keep it as um, general as possible, not targeting specific um, specific persons that they are actually referring to, um, but to the extent of where um, the viewers can actually relate. Like, oh, okay, um, I'm a mother of three, um, and part of my challenges as a mother of three is actually to relate back to my children and so on. Yeah. And I guess to further add on to what Hidayah has to say is that uh, previously we have ran like workshops in, within the UBL and they've had to go through role, role plays and group activities. And we have always uh, reminded and emphasized the point that um, you don't need to share or disclose any personal information or anything that is not uh, comfortable uh, for the rest to know. Um, yep. So, and of course, if they were to do the videos and it's up on YouTube and stuff, there is always a guideline that we would abide to. Uh, definitely to protect their, uh, uh, their well-being and personal uh, privacy also. All right. With that, any other further questions from the judges? Nope. All right. With that, thank you very much. We'll, let's give them another round of applause. Thank you very much.